We've made it to the end, y'all. We have made it to the end. Okay? The season finale of Baddies Caribbean. 20 long episodes. I gotta be honest with you. This this season to me was at least a little more bearable than last season. Last season was so toxic I was just over over it. Um, but this one wasn't as bad. I didn't enjoy the season as, that much. But it wasn't as bad as last season, right? But I'm glad it's over, and I'm glad that we can get into the reunion soon. Um, so welcome back, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. You're watching the official Baddies Caribbean After Show, only on Damien After Dark, your number one go-to place for the Baddies Caribbean gossip and tea and recaps, okay? Because we're going to talk about it all in our recaps. We talk about all the, all the tea, what's going on. We get into it over here, baby. So if you're new... If you're new here and you have never been to the Damien After Dark channel before, baby, you're going to have a ball, okay? And if you don't know, ask my subscribers. They will tell you. We have a key over here. So go ahead, get subscribed, click my face down below, and that can get you subscribed if you don't know how to subscribe to, to different channels. Also, you'll see a thumbs up button down below. Click that if you don't mind. Please, please, please. That helps me get into the algorithm if every person liked it. If for, for every person that watched every view that I got, if each one of you would just like the video, it would do wonders. So I would really appreciate that, okay? Get in the comment section and leave me your thoughts and opinions on the season finale of Baddies Caribbean. What did you think? Let me know. Did you have any, you know, favorite moments? Did you have any fan favorites? Do you want to see any of these girls come back next season? Like, I got so many questions for you guys that we're going to get into into this recap. This might run into an hour recap. I know y'all love the long videos. I know y'all love them. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do to, to do that. That's the least I could do for um, being late because my goal is to try to get these videos out at least by Monday and it don't ever happen. It's so difficult. Oh, my God. Um, but you're bearing with me. You've been patient with me. I appreciate that. And, um, yeah. So get in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you want to join the Damien After Dark movement and help us sustain and grow this podcast, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate. If you um, use a super chat, please be mindful that YouTube takes 50%. Because I've found out that a lot of my subscribers did not know that. I don't think YouTube tells you that. And if they do, it's probably in fine print. But yes, so if you donate $20 to someone, they take 10 of it. Crazy, right? They're pimping us over here. And I heard a rumor that we're going up to 60%. So they might be taking more. I don't know. Um, what else was I going to talk about before we got into it? I don't know. I guess I'm just glad that the season's over. <clears throat> um, it's still warm where I'm at. I don't know about you guys, but it's like in the 80s here. It's nice weather. But I'm just like, I, I get cold. I'm cold all the time. I've always been like that. But I found out. I got blood work done and I found out that I'm anemic, that I have anemia and low iron. And it all made sense then. Because like even now, I'm sitting here in a hoodie. Now, sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes y'all see me, I be in here. Primarily, it was in the summer. It was this summer. I'd have a tank top on. I'd be sweating, hot, you know, have a fan running, have air running. But um, that's summertime. But now, like, I don't know. I just be really cold all the time. And I'm, and I'm, my air's off. It's 80 degrees outside. I got a hoodie on, but it's, it's all good. Let me, let me, let me stop rambling, okay? Um, if you haven't checked out my recap on the baddies midwest and baddies gone wild auditions that is uploaded now okay go check that out and then jocelyn's cabaret is coming after this video and then young and young and reckless will come after jocelyn's cabaret okay all right so so they're in the dominican republic still 
the girls are splitting up, right? We saw last week, we're picking up from last week, the girls are splitting up. If you remember, I told you guys that last week, some of the girls are going to do charity work. Some of the other girls are going to do um, going to explore the city. They're going to go through uh, Dominican Republic, and they're going to explore. And um, Natalie, Sapphire, Jayla, Scotty, Roly, they're the ones going to the charity, while Biggie is going to be taking the girls on a Dominican Republic tour to go shop and do things like that. Now, first we see Biggie and her crew go through Dominican Republic and, you know, they're going and shopping and doing little things and they go to a tobacco store and they're getting some kind of leafy stuff called Grava, Grava. And the only reason I'm finding, like, I don't, I'm not familiar with this, but what's funny about it is I found like this little plastic packet of, of this same stuff that they're talking about, um, outside of my job one day. And I was like, what is this? And it said it said Grava or Grava, whatever it's called. It was definitely a G-R-A something and with the uh at the end, right? Um, so when I saw them getting this, I'm like, what is this stuff? Because I ended up, I, the one I found, I threw away because I didn't know what it was. It looked like some you, something you could smoke. And we all know I like to smoke. So I, I'm just curious, what is the Grava? Do I need to try the Grava? <laughs> is the Grava like THC? Y'all feel me in. Um, what's the hype? What's the hype? Now this last week, you know, we saw the sneak peek of Anna Mac and Biggie getting into it in the street and it looked pretty bad. And we find out that this stems from this whole tobacco store situation because Biggie gets a pound of this Graba stuff, like a big bag. She gets a big bag of it. And Biggie said that Anna was wanting to buy like little bitty, you know, little pieces of it. Y'all know how like some people will go get them a, an ounce of weed. And then you got some people who want to get like a gram here and there. And I'm not shading it. I've done that before too. Let me get a gram or two if I ain't got a lot of money. I've been there. I've done that. Um, but we're talking about Zeus Network. Girls that are making great money, right? Um, so... That's pretty much what Anna was doing. She was like wanting to get like, oh, I'm going to get like a little half a gram and a, and then B went ahead and got her, her the pound. And I don't blame her. I mean, shit, we in the island, we traveling, we going to, I want my shit, whatever this stuff is. I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking it's weed, but I, I know it's not weed. Um, But they get to bickering a little bit. Anna gets to bickering. Let me say that because Biggie doesn't say anything. Um, but Anna is outside and she tells Biggie, let me get, let me get some of yours. And Biggie says, no, I just paid. I just, I just bought this, um, sis, go, go buy your own. It's right there. I just got a pound. And, um, Anna was like, oh, you're stingy. You're stingy. And she got frustrated and she started bickering with her a little bit. And then, um, Hold on. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, okay. So, they end up getting into it outside, right? I mean, we saw the clip. We saw it on the show. They get. They are literally in each other's faces, screaming, hollering. Um, I mean, I, I, was, I was shocked because we've never seen that between... Anna and Biggie, right? And Anna tells Biggie to stop acting big headed. You need to stop acting big headed, bitch. She said, I'm not the fucking producers. Which that told me something. When Anna when Anna said I'm not the fucking producers, that made me realize that Biggie probably talks to the producers like like crap. Because why else would Anna say that, right? She's pretty much saying you're not gonna talk to me the same way you do these producers. And I do believe that Biggie can get big headed. I do. I, we've seen it. She she be thinking she's Big Mama Don, and it's like, girl, I get it. Like you were bullied, and you're you're in, you're a very insecure girl, and you've got some fame and fortune now, and you're feeling yourself. Um. Now, Anna keeps saying, "This is weird." It's weird, bro. It's weird. Even she said it's weird. And they said it was weird. And um, I'm just like, excuse me? 
Do y'all see why I don't like this girl? Do you see how entitled she is? That she feels like things should just be given to her because you're her friend or whatever the case may be? Why would Biggie buy your shit for you when you're both on the same show? When you're both making great money? Huh? Make that make sense. Even when... Take Zeus aside. Take the show away. If I go on vacation with my friends... I'm not buying my friends souvenirs. I mean, if they don't have no money or they ask me or I might buy them a little cute keychain or something like that. But I'm not going to be buying. I, I, do y'all know what I'm saying? Like, that don't make sense to me because I'm not going to go on vacation with no broke bitch anyway that can't get their own shit. But it's giving that Anna is broke. And the streets have been talking ever since Anna hit the hit the hit the streets. Ever since Anna was on baddies, the streets have been talking and they say she's broke. That she doesn't have a home. That she doesn't have a car. This is all alleged. This is what the streets be saying. That she doesn't have a car. She doesn't have a home. You know, she she be be bopping around in different places. And I I just don't get that. Because my thing is, I know you ain't fucking on lemon pepper for free, sis. Are you fucking on lemon pepper just for like, oh, like, put me back on baddies? Like, girl... You're a dumb hoe if that's the way it's working. How are you broke and you fucking on the CEO, allegedly? I would have a car. I would have a home that was paid for by now. I don't want a, I don't want an apartment that he pays rent on. No, baby. Because you can stop paying rent at any time. I need a home purchased for me. Because he, listen, if he's flying in private jets like that, he got it. Okay. He got it. This is some broke whole shit. All right. Um, and to be honest, because she kept, we saw uh, Anna, she she walked off. Uh, Tessiki ended up separating them because she was like, you know, come over here with me, Anna. Let it go. Let it go. And Anna was like, no, that bitch is always so stingy. She's stingy with food. She's stingy with everything. And I'm like, damn, you be trying to eat Biggie's food as well? Cause see, we all know how that go. You y'all are probably the same way. Don't fuck with my food. Don't fuck with somebody's food. Again, there are different circumstances here when things could be different. I'm eating a pizza. Oh, here, friend, you want a piece? You know, you you, you share in situations like that. But Anna seemed like a type that you would be sitting there eating, and Anna seemed like the type that she would just like oh and pick food off of your plate. Ooh, Biggie, let me have a let me let me have a chicken wing. Ooh, Biggie, let me have a French fry. I'm, that's how I picture Anna being, and absolutely not, absolutely not. I completely am on Biggie's side on this one. I'm not giving you any of my shit, especially when we just went in there and you could have bought you some too. How much? How much of? Because we know Biggie loves to smoke her weed. How much weed do Biggie be smoking with Anna? She's probably sick of it. Because we prob- we don't see a lot of this stuff, right? We don't see a lot of the downtime when they're just chilling. Is Big- it's very likely that Biggie could have been smoking weed with Anna ever since they've been on the show together. And Biggie's just kind of like, I'm tired of it. She never she never contributes anything. And Biggie's probably thinking, hell, I ain't getting no pussy out of it. Because <laughs> we all know Biggie want that. Biggie want that twat. And at one point, I was like, okay, Biggie could have shared a little bit of her graba because she did have a pound. But then I was like, no. Like, like, and even Biggie told Anna, the store, we're literally right in front of the store still. They were standing in front of that tobacco store when they were arguing. Anna, if you wanted it that bad, baby love, just go in there and get you some more. It's giving you don't have the money to do so. either that or you're just used to people giving you everything in your life and that's not cute at all and then um as Tasiki is taking Anna away to de-escalate the situation you know I told you guys that Anna's kind of um, venting and going off talking about how Biggie is selfish and stingy with her food and all this other stuff and then she goes on to say 
and don't don't play. Uh, this is this is why I think Anna's broke. Okay, she goes on to say, "Don't play with me about bread. Don't fucking play with me about money in front of the cameras." Hmm. Oh. Why is that, Anna? Because you got clocked for being broke, pretty much? Why is Anna so mad that money got brought up on camp? You're so worried about being portrayed as a broke bee? Because that's what it's given. That's what it's given. I'm sorry, y'all. It is. Now, I know Anna makes money off of these shows, but there are also people who are not good with their money. Especially if you've never had money before. If you've never had money in your life and you've always kind of like struggled to get by. And let's say you get a $50,000 check. The chances of you running through that $50,000 check is very high. Especially if you don't have any financial skills or you have poor um, you know, poor financial education. As a lot of us do. Let's face it. A lot of us do. We don't get taught things like that in school like we should. I think all kids in school should have to go through some kind of financial literacy class learn about you know credit learn about um you know uh banks and getting loans and and just so many different things um so with anna I think she very likely, you know, she's gotten money from Zeus, but it's also very likely she's probably blown fucking through it. She's also young. She's the youngest girl in the cast, and she's probably never had money before. She gets this $50,000 check and uh, from doing the show, and she probably blew right fucking through it. Now... We see Natalie and Scotty and Jayla and Sapphire and um, I think Mariah Lynn was there too. Was it Mariah Lynn there? Um, they go to do this whole charity thing, right? And of course, in traditional Zeus fashion, it was a sloppy, hot, unorganized mess. Because what I thought was that they were going to show up to... An establishment, a building, an organization, right? Because there's apparently there was this women's center, but they never went there. The girls pulled up on the street. There was a lot of people out there waiting on them, cheering them on, like they were about to walk into the club or something. You know, all these people from all these Dominicans, they're outside. Uh, I don't even think they knew who the baddies were, but I think they were just probably told we're going to give away some money. And everybody was excited, right? Um, now I thought they were just donating a check, but boy, was I wrong because there was a lot of misfortune, misfortunate people there and it's sad to see and it, it really puts into perspective how lucky and blessed we are to live in a, in a nation like we do where there's, um, endless opportunities and we can make money unlike these countries where there's really no you know, um, there's really mu not much opportunity to make money. Um, so yeah, the girls get out on the street where everybody is and things go left because there's no organization, there's no building, there's no nothing. Um, they start handing out cash, y'all. <laughs> Y'all know they did this last year on Baddies Caribbean when they went to Jamaica. They were handing out cash and it got crazy. Well, this time they're doing it again. And it looks even crazier than what Jamaica was. I was like, I mean, and even some of the girls said they were a little scared after, you know, they were, they were getting a little intimidated and scared with what was going on. And I understand there was a lot of people just clawing their way to the front. And I mean, you're, you're in a... Is it a third world country? Is that a way to put it? Is the, is the DR third world? Either way, you're in a country where there's a lot of poverty. And y'all are sitting here with $100 bills, which I don't know if they, if they can even use that or if they'll be able to go. I guess they'll be able to go get it 
transfer to whatever their dot their currency system is but y'all got all this money these hundred dollar bills everywhere handing them out of course it's going to be pandemonium it's like holding out food to somebody who's to a group of people that are starving they're going to like run at it right god y'all i look really tired i'm looking at my stuff in the camera and i just like I look so tired, and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'll be. I'm just gonna be completely honest with y'all. Not only, not only am I tired and delirious, I am high. <laughs> I smoked a little bit of weed, so I'm stoned. So that didn't really help much. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it, it became a safety concern out there with all those people. You know, they're all going nuts. It was it was wild, and I would have been a little scared too. Like, no, I'm I'm good. I won't stay on the Sprinter van. Y'all, y'all do what you want. It's like Zeus. Why don't y'all ever learn? Y'all make the same mistakes over and over and over again, Zeus. Come on, now. Nah. Now I did see Natalie. She she her main focus was handing the kids money, and I thought that was so sweet. I loved that. She had a lot of kids like in a group handing them out hundred dollar bills, and I'm like, that's great. Now I hope the kids, you know, do something good with it, or hell, even if they go buy candy and toys, great, whatever. It was just nice to see that that they did that. I like that. Um, they should have just went about it a different way. That's all. They should have went about it a different way. Maybe had everybody line up and one by one come up to a table or something. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. It became a mob. It really did. It was like a mob for real. And even Roly said that. I think it was Roly. Somebody said it was a mob of people. Um. But you know what? I can't even blame it on the on the Dominicans because in the U.S. they could come over here and do that in the U.S. of A. Okay. And people would act the same. If we went out here on the streets in any, you know, um, area that's got a lot of people in it, uh, heavily populated areas, and just started handing out $100 bills, y'all don't think a, a mob would start? Yeah. Now, Anna... is out talking to producers venting okay she's venting to the producers she's talking to them and um and specifically about the other ladies and nunu apparently hears what anna mac was saying and according to nunu according to nunu um Anna Mac was saying, like, you know, this bitch, yeah, that bitch, this, these, these, no, it was these bitches, these bitches, these bitches, um, and I think Anna even claimed at her confessional that, <laughs> Anna claimed at her confessional that, um, Nunu was eavesdropping, I couldn't think of the word. Yeah, Anna accused Nunu of eavesdropping, thinking that Nunu was just sitting there listening. And I'm curious to hear from y'all that watched that episode. Do y'all think that Nunu was eavesdropping on Anna and the producer, or do you think she just overheard it? Because I feel like she just overheard it, because Anna's loud. I could see her back there saying, these bitches, I'm sick of it. I don't want to be here no more. Fuck her. Fuck. And then you just, you know, you walking by and you hear it. It's like, the fuck? This bitch, you know, I'm, like, I don't see her being like, And maybe she was, maybe she was, but I just don't, I don't, I don't see it. <laughs> Anna tells Nunu, I feel like you're only trying to try me because I'm tired. I feel like you're only trying me because I'm tired, or not. <laughs> okay, so I had to regroup you guys, um, I don't know what the footage looks like of the video before, <laughs> but I had to stop filming because I was so delirious, y'all. Like, I was so tired. I was out of it, and I felt like I was rambling, and at one point, I forgot what I was even saying. I know we were talking about Nunu and Anna Mac, and then I just started, like, 
I'm going to have to edit out some of it because I probably sound fucking crazy, okay? Anyway, I was like, Damien, go to bed. Go to bed. Wake up and, and try this again, all right? So <laughs> we're going to pick back up where we um, where I left off. And I was a little out of it. I was delirious and I'd smoked some weed. So I was just like, <laughs> but we know that um, Anna Mac was talking to the producers and she was venting to the producers. She was saying, you know, these bitches this season, I can't stand these bitches this season, yada, yada, yada. And Nunu heard it, right? Nunu overheard it. Um, now, Nunu says she overheard it. Anna Mac says that, oh, she was eavesdropping. She was eavesdropping. But you confirmed, Anna Mac, in your confessional that, you know, you were talking about Nunu because you said you told the producers that these new bi bitches aren't like last season's girls. And, you know, if I were to overhear that, too, and I'm one of these new girls, I'd be like, fuck you, too, bitch. Right? Like, I would I would want to, I'd be, I'd be pissed, too. And I don't care what nobody says. I like Nunu. I don't know why. Like, she grew on me. She did some shit that was a little weird. Like, when she first came after on a Mac, it seemed, it seemed unwarranted. Um, which she said that producers told her to do it. But you don't have to do what they tell you to do. But I get the pressures of when producers ask you to do something. In your mind, you're thinking, well, if I don't do it, I won't get to come back next season, right? Um, but I like Nunu because she sees what I see in on a Mac. And she ain't gonna let she ain't letting shit slide on the Mac. The rest of these girls are following Lemon Pepper's demands. The rest of these girls, yeah, we'll protect Anna Mac. Oh yeah, she's cool. She's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, now we see her and Anna go back and forth at the last dinner. They have a last dinner with everybody sitting there, and all the girls are pretty much going to you know give their final thoughts on the season. Uh, you know, recount uh, recount their experience, talk about what it was like, what they went through. And Anna and Nunu end up going back and forth. And Anna says something like, if my face wouldn't, or no, it wasn't Anna, it was Nunu. If, you're, if she said, if your face wouldn't fucked up or something like that. And I'm just like, I'm so tired of that narrative with Anna and her face being fucked up. There's nothing wrong with Anna Max's face, y'all. There's nothing wrong with her face or she would not be there. She has no problem throwing, you know, trying to, trying to uh jump on people she has no problem throwing shit at people she has no problem getting in the mix so you're you're fair game baby I'm, am i the only one that feels that way i'm just tired of that narrative that she's injured nunu should have gotten a fair fade with her period point blank this is baddies right everybody whooping everybody right oh no except for on a mac okay um, but I'm excited for the reunion because the reunion, hopefully we will get to see that. We'll get to see Nunu versus Anna Mac and she'll get her lick back. Now, not Jayla saying she has couth and decorum. <laughs> Jayla said, I have couth and decorum. Girl, where? Jayla. Now, don't tell that lie. Now, Natalie calls on Callie to let Callie talk about her experience. And Callie says that she felt like when she came on to the show that Jayla and Natalie were bullies. She pretty much says she felt like they were bullies. They were like this little mean girl click at the beginning of the season, which I'm sure there was a lot that we didn't see. You know, there's probably things that we did not, excuse me, that we did not get to see. Um... Now, Natalie, in her confessionals, when talking about Callie, says, don't come for the OGs. Don't you ever come for the OGs. Shut the fuck up. That's exactly what Natalie says. And see, Natalie, this is why the fans want you gone. This is why fans want you to bow out. Because it's like the playing field almost isn't fair. You want people to tell you what you want to hear. You want people to kiss your big round ass. You want people to, to lick your chin. And they're not going to do it. Like, everybody's not built like that. Like, I know some of these girls are going to do it. But everybody's not built like that. And, and to be honest, that's why I fucked with Callie. 
for so long is because she wasn't coming in there like Jelly Bean and a lot of these others, Jayla. And, Natalie, Natalie does no wrong. Natalie does no wrong. Like, uh, hold Natalie accountable. Call her out when when um, she's wrong. And that's why I used to fuck with Roly, which I'm going to get in Roly in a minute because I'm a little disappointed in her too. Um, but that's why I used to fuck with Roly because in Batty South, Roly let Natalie have it when she was wrong and she didn't give a fuck that Natalie was the EP of this show. Um, now, let's talk about Tinkerbella. Lord child, Tinkerbella. Um, so Natalie asks, you know, she goes around the room, she's going around the table asking everybody, you know, tell me about your experience. How was your experience? So Tinkabella talks about hers, her experience, and she says that the best part was getting a baddie chain. Here we go with this baddie chain bullshit. But the worst part was losing her experience with her sister. Okay. Now, do y'all remember how last week I told y'all, I said, you know what? I changed my mind about Tinkabella. I don't think, because I've, I've said from the beginning that I think Tinkabella is acting. I think she's an actress. I think she's over the top. I think she's doing, you know. And then I said last week, well, you know what? I changed my mind because I think this is who Tinkabella is. I think this is just who she is. I think she's been, um, I think um, she's been consistent consistently acting yes i changed my mind again okay i'm allowed to change my mind we're allowed to change our minds right i do think tinkerbell is acting and it made me realize that i felt vindicated in my feelings when i saw so many other people saying that i'm like okay damien you're a good judge of character then because other people are seeing what you're seeing i want to show y'all something let me let's put this up here on the screen um can we put it or maybe should i put it up here or um anyway someone put this on was it Twitter, I think? I think it was on Twitter. And pretty much, you know, they were like, does anybody else think that Tinkabella is um, acting? Is it just me? And I'm like, oh, so it's not just me. You know, especially, and I was giving Tinkabella the benefit of the doubt last week, but we get into this scene. We get into this scene where Natalie asks Tinkabella to talk about her experience, and she goes into the baddie chain thing, and then she goes into this dramatic, you are my sister. You are my sister, and I trusted you. And you know what? I want you to get a baddie chain. I want you to get a baddie chain, because I love you, but I don't trust you. No, I don't trust you. Girl. And the Oscar goes to, because I'm not not even ten minutes later. You over there putting the, the chain on Meatball's neck, and not to spoil it for anybody, not to spoil it for anybody that didn't watch. But we're gonna get into get into the Meatball and her chain, okay? <sighs> this show just drains me. I'm like I'm like Marlo on Real Housewives of Atlanta. <sighs> Today drained me, except it's <sighs> Zeus. You drain me, okay? Um, yeah, it's it's the overacting for me. It comes off so fake and corny, and I'm changing my mind again, Tinkabella. Um, I don't think this is who you are after watching this scene. I don't like you need you need to go back to Groundlings and take some lessons, okay? And Groundlings is, for those that don't know, Groundlings is a place in L.A. you can go to do acting lessons and improv and all that good stuff. Go, go, go do that, baby, because it's coming off very, it's coming off very Tyler Perry. All oh, my life I had to fight. It's coming off very like that, okay? And, and keep in mind, Tinka even said, and her, if you watched this week's episode, she said, I've always dreamed of this, right? I've always dreamed of this. I guarantee y'all, Tinka Bella has always wanted to be an actress. I guarantee you. Because a lot of people, what happens is a lot of these p people that have wanted to be actors and actresses growing up as kids and was in theater and did plays and all that, they go into reality TV because it's almost like this other layer where they can harness their creativity and, um, or in Tinkabella's case, you can act. You know, she's treating this. She's treating this as an acting job. It's almost like show your real feelings, but amplify it by a thousand, 
right? Because I do feel like Tinka Bella was hurt over the chain and 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 um, Meatball not being happy for her. But I feel like she amped it up and because like, oh, I got cameras on me and action. Oh my god, you know? Am I making sense? She's just so th she's just so theatrical. Now, while while Tinkabella is you know going at Meatball about this whole chain ordeal, Meatball says that she thought that that her and Tinka both deserve the chain. That was her issue. She thought that they both deserve the chain, not just Tinka. And I think it's interesting though if you watch when Tinkabella and Meatball interact. I've never seen Meatball, like, she listens to Tinkabella, you know? Like, and that's why I can tell there's a history there. I can see why I guess they call themselves sisters now. Because you can tell there's a history there because when Tink, when Tink checks Meatball and she gets in her eyes, Meatball listens for the most part, you know? She tries to listen. She It seems like she's trying to receive what she's saying. When we don't really see her do that with with the other girls. Um, I don't ever see her listen to anybody else the way she does Tinka. Now, Meatball apologizes to Tinkabella and says, I forgive, um, she says, um, I apologize. I apologize for what I did. And here go Tinkabella. Um, she says, what did she say? Uh, I forgive you, but I don't accept your apology. I forgive you, but I don't accept your apology. And, I mean, y'all just watch, y'all. Go back. If you haven't watched, please go watch it so you can t so you, so I can say that I'm not crazy here. And for those that watched, comment and let me know that, tell me I'm not crazy. When 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 Tinka is talking about the whole, you know, um, I forgive you, but I don't accept your apology. When she does all that, pay attention. Watch. It's so obvious that this is all premeditated. It's so obvious that she went in wanting to create a great scene, which there's nothing wrong with wanting to create a great scene. The problem comes in is with the acting. The overacting. Tamara Judge does it on the Real Housewives of Orange County. And the and the crazy part about it is I believed Meatball in that scene. I believed Meatball. In that scene, Meatball said, um, you know, she was apologizing, right? She was apologizing. And listen, there's a lot of things I say about pork chop. There's a lot of shit I can say about pork chop. And for those who don't know, pork chop is Meatball. But but one thing that pork chop has that a lot of these girls don't have is she's, she's her fucking self. She don't ever be on there acting like a lot of these hoes do. Right. And I think that's and even Meatball has said it. She said these bitches get funny when the cameras come up and I believe it 100 percent. And that's probably why I think I think there's more layers to this. We think that Meatball is a hater and she's jealous and she's mad. But what I think is happening now, now that the wheels are turning in my brain, is that Meatball is used to a different Tinkabella. And now that they're on this show together, Meatball sees that Tinkabella has turned into someone completely different because she's acting and then they see that and then meatball sees that tinka gets this chain and meatball's like what the fuck she's getting this chain for what she's been fake this is not who she is right like a light bulb is going off in my head now that i'm kind of putting the pieces together i would look i would low-key like to talk to meatball about it i know it wouldn't happen because i've talked a lot of cash buddy shit about her over here but it's starting to make sense now as to why she seems so envious and jealous and, and pissy about it. You know, I don't want that fucking chain. Da, da, da. And Meatball even said to her, you know, I don't apologize to bitches unless I mean it. And I, I, I believe that, too. I don't feel like we've seen Meatball apologize one time this season. I think I think um, Meatball will not apologize unless she really, truly means it. Because she's a, Meatball's a lot of things. We can call her a hater. We can call her sloppy, sloppy looking. You know, we can call her a lot of shit. But I think that she keeps it real. I think that she's going to keep it real with, with you all the time. Um, we get around to Biggie. And Biggie's, you know, she says that this was her third season in one year. Which took me back a little bit. Because I'm like, maybe they, I'm like, How? There's no way. Batty's West was not a year ago, right? Unless she's meaning like 
they filmed all these in one year and it's a, it's aired over like two years. I don't know. There's no way that they they, they filmed through. They, there's no way that they filmed Baddies West, Baddies East, Baddies Caribbean in one year. Did they? Maybe they did. Shit. Now, it was nice to see Biggie and Roly move on past their differences. They, you know, uh, Biggie mentions that, Roly, I'm glad that this is our first season that we actually got along and we were able to move past our differences. Roly tells Biggie that she loves her. I think that the more a lot of these girls are around each other, they, they, they start growing these organic friendships and bonds. We see the two girls hug it out. We find out that they have the same birthday, which I kind of already knew that from um, social media, but that might make sense why the two clash a lot they're probably a lot more alike than they realize um having the exact same birthday now anna gives her a little speech and she gets emotional she gets emotional with the girls and she says that all these girls helped her get through what she was going through back home and she says that she would rather argue with all these girls here than have to go home and argue with who she was arguing with i mean who wouldn't who wouldn't rather go be on a TV show and argue with a bunch of bitches and get paid and be in paradise than be at home arguing with their baby daddy that they can't stand <laughs> or their boyfriend that they can't stand? Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, that was a raw, vulnerable moment from Anna. We don't really get much from her like that. She always tries to be hard and tough. And I can appreciate when someone can kind of, I don't want to even say soften up because I don't like to say that. I, I have always looked at people who are vulnerable if you can be vulnerable and cry in front of a group of people or cry in front of me, I look at that as a strength, okay? I don't look at that as a weakness. I don't look at that as that you're soft. I look at that as like, oh, okay, you're not afraid to let it out. You're not one of those that are like, I'm going to try to be this tough guy and keep it all in. We're human beings. We fucking cry, right? So I respected this moment from Anna Mac that she came out and she said, look, you guys helped me being here. I got out of this toxic situation I was in. I, I was at home fighting with this man every day. I'd rather fight with you bitches. At least I'm getting paid. And at least I'm in paradise, right? I respect that. I respect that. Um, and I, listen, I truly believe that Automac acts a way she does for a reason. People are the way they are for a reason. And I think Anna's probably been through a lot of shit. Um, maybe that we don't know about that she's never really been open about. Everyone has a story. Um, we've all been through something, but ultimately it's how you come out on top. And what you've been through is not an excuse for shitty behavior, right? And that's my issue with Anna. Like, you have such shitty behavior, my love. But she's young. She's very young. And hopefully she will grow up one day, you know, and um, become a better woman than what she is now. Because right now she's a little girl. But I felt for her in that moment, especially if she's being hit on by a man. Like, like, like in all seriousness, because that's why she's allegedly on injured reserved is that her jaw was fucked up because she got hit on by her boyfriend. Um, I, I, I thought she was fucking on lemon pepper. Is that why he hit her? I don't know. I'm just like speculating. Did, did lemon pepper, did the boyfriend find out? Because this is how I could kind of see it. Automax in a relationship. She gets on this TV show. The boyfriend's probably insecure. She gets on the show, she's getting this fame, she's getting this attention, she's getting this money, she's fucking on Lemon Pepper, the boyfriend's pissed, he goes crazy, he he knocked her in the face. That's what I'm thinking probably happened. I don't know from Adam, but that's what it sounded like. That was what the streets was saying, as far as her being hit on by her, boy, her boyfriend. Now, Diamond Body says... She's sitting by Meatball, and she said she looks over, and Meatball is holding a knife in her hand, a butter knife. And um, I'm just like, oh, God, oh, Lord Jesus, because we know Meatball had a knife once before on the Sprinter van, remember. But Diamond the Body ends up getting up, and she goes from the opposite side of the table, and she sits by Mariah over here, which I kind of don't blame Diamond the Body, because 10 seconds before that, when, when, when Diamond was sitting by Meatball, Meatball, like, was hitting her vape and she blew the smoke directly in diamond the body's face like directly in it did y'all see it like if this is diamond the body and i'm meatball she did exactly that right into her face and diamond the body didn't really do any didn't say much but you know when you vape it's, it you can just easily blow up 
You know, the blows in direct, directly into somebody's face. So I think that was like sign number one that like, does this, does this bitch have a problem with me or something? And then she sees her holding this butter knife. So I don't blame her. I probably wouldn't have gotten up too. Um, meatballs seems a little unpredictable. We don't know if that heart, that hoe going to start gutting like a fish out of nowhere. <laughs> no. Um, no, Natalie says, Diamond, why did you get up? What happened? And Diamond explains that she's got a knife in her hand. I don't feel safe. And Meatball says, it's a butter knife. If I was going to hurt you, I would use my hands. But I beg to differ, Meatball. I beg to differ, my love. Like I said, you've had a knife in your hand once this season. You seem like... Meatball gives me the type of vibes. Meatball seem like one of them hood bitches that would pull a bra... Uh, not a bra. Pull a blade out of her bra or under her wig, and cut the fuck out of you, okay? That's the kind of vibes I get off Meatball. Now, do y'all blame Diamond the Body for getting up and moving? Would you would have done the same thing, or do you think she was reaching? Do you think she was overreacting? Chime in below and sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about that particular incident. Let's talk about Tessiki. I want to talk about her performance this season. Tessiki was useless, Okay. Y'all want to be real, or do you want me to fake the funk and tell you she's beautiful, great? Well, she is beautiful, but do you want me to fake the funk and say she's just the most entertaining thing ever? Oh my God, I love her. Cause that ain't that that ain't this kind of show. If you want that kind of show, go go on over to somebody else. But let's be real. Pull your chairs up. Come close. Tasiki was useless this season. Tasiki, you live in your sister's shadow. Let's be real. You live in your sister's shadow. You are the Jamie Lynn Spears to Britney Spears. Right? You are, you are, I don't even, I feel like this is a terrible comparison because I love Solange, but you are the Solange to the Beyonce. But I, I hate to do that because I like Solange and I feel like she, Solange, I feel like has carved out her own lane for herself. She doesn't live in her sister's shadow. So I take that back. I feel like Jamie Lynn lived in her sister Brittany's shadow. You're a Jamie Lynn, okay? Tasiki, you've lived in your sister's shadow. You've brought nothing to this show. You think because you can eat and dislocate faces that that means something. No. You don't have much of a personality. Now, your fashions were cute. I liked, liked your hair. I liked some of the things that you brought there. You're a pretty girl, beautiful girl, great music. I'm not going to get up here and dog her without, without being real uh, when it comes to the great things about her. Because y'all know that about me. I try to be as unbiased as I can. But with Tzatziki, she's a, she has... I, I've said this before. I said it last season. She's, she needs to get off reality TV. It's not for her. I get why she's doing it. Exposure, a platform, and she needs the money. 100% get it. But you are, for, for, from a commentator's point of view, you're, you're, you're boring. I don't want to watch you. I don't care. Um, I feel like you're weird. Just like with you and the whole Onamac versus Roly, those are two different weight classes. What about you and Jelly Bean when you fought Jelly Bean and you over here fighting like a motherfucking man? That was two different, two different skill, skill, skill sets, skill levels, whatever you want to call it. So you bitches be hypocritical. I don't fuck with you, Tzatziki. I just, I really don't. I tried, but this season she really turned me off. The way she did Jelly Bean, the way she did Roly. Mm -mm, I really don't have much to say to her. She's not an interesting watch. Please don't bring her back next season, Zeus. I have a feeling they will because Zeus wants the next best thing to Krishan. That's what it boils down to. Zeus wants the next best thing to Krishan. And you're never going to get that with Tessiki. You're not. Y'all want like And, and the, 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 same, the same amount of people that tuned in to see Krishan are not going to tune in just to see Tessiki. And I know a lot of y'all love her. And you can love her. That's the beauty of this channel. We can agree and disagree. And I still love y'all the same tomorrow. But. Tell me if right now, if you're pro Tessiki, if you're a Tessiki fan, tell me what she brings to this show in the comments. Chime in, okay? Now, in her speech, Tessiki's speech, she says, I got to vibe with my girl Tink. And Meatball goes, um, who cares? <laughs> girl, Meatball, it looks like 
And again, I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt because like I told you earlier, I think that she's pissed because Tinka's been acting. But it looks like that the jealousy is seeping out of your pores, sis. It really does. Like, it wasn't a good look. Um, meatball. And maybe you should have explained that better. If that was the case, I would have said, I, I'm not, I, I can't be happy for her when, when, when she, when this ain't even the girl I know. She's acting. This girl's being fake. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know, Meatball. You just looked, you came off really haterish this season. You really did. <sighs> Jayla starts doing her little speech. She says, as a returning OG to Betty's Caribbean, y'all love to throw that OG shit around. The only OGs are Sarah, Judy, Natalie, Tanisha, um, Christina, Seven, Sydney, and uh, not Elise. What's that other girl's name? Is it Elise? I, don't, I forget her. I forget her name. Like, you're not an OG, Jayla. You're not. Never be an OG. Um, I guess we want to call her an OG from Bad Girls Club. Now, we can give her that. She's the OG bad girl. You know, because she comes from the Bad Girls Club. But I'm good on all these girls coming back for another season. I'm good. I don't need to see nobody else come back. Yeah, we know Natalie's coming back. But if we're going to bring Natalie back, bring Natalie back and 10, 15 new girls. We know realistically that's not going to happen. But is there anyone here that you guys would like to see come back? I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. We know who we won't see next season. And that's Mariah Lynn. Because we all know that I told y'all here. We reported on it here that Mariah Lynn was not going to come back this season. Mariah Lynn was not supposed to come back this season. But when they signed her on to Baddies East, she signed a multi or multi-season deal so they had no choice but to bring her back or buy her out right buy her out of the contract so unless mariah signs a fresh new contract her contract is expiring this season allegedly so she won't be back and i'm very grateful for that i do not want to see mariah lynn on my screen again that girl is as fake and as fraudulent as they come. She don't know if she want to be a white woman. She don't know if she want to be Puerto Rican. She don't know if she want to be black. She don't know what the fuck she want to be. Okay. Let's get, let's get into Asian doll. I'm just kind of going around and giving like my own little analysis on each person this season. If you want to give your own in the comments, give your own in the comments, and let's 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 see what y'all got to say. Um, Asian Doll was another one that was useless, pointless to me to be there. Didn't understand it. It was all about, it. Was, I told y'all that was stunt casting. Um, that was all to bring eyeballs to the show. They wouldn't have cared if Asian Doll would have showed up and just sat there. They wanted Asian Doll's followers to come to Zeus Network. That's what it boils down to. She brought nothing. Um, I feel like Asian Doll should just stick to rapping, just like Tessiki pretty girl asian is pretty girl um and it's no shade and you know what i think it is i don't even want to blame these girls as bad as i want to blame zeus i blame zeus because zeus sets them up for failure zeus doesn't show us who they are they don't show us who these girls are you know what i'm saying like we need to see their personalities that and it's more than just seeing them sit in a scene and talk it's more than that like the same way we saw Big Ego meet with her family like i wish we could get more personalized in-depth scenes with some of these girls um I don't know. I almost feel like baddies was shot like Real Housewives. You know, I'm tired of the going to city to city and living in a house and fighting all day. I wish we could just kind of follow these girls' lives, a group of baddie friends. I think that would be a lot more interesting. And we can see their personal stories because we don't know these girls at all. And we end up disliking them because the little bit that we do see is nauseating. Now, Scotty says that the only complaint she had while filming Batty's Caribbean was that the food was terrible in the Caribbean. I'm like, what? I was, I would assume that the food would be great down there. And, you know, I'm, I think of seafood and I think of spices and I think of jerk chicken and I think of, you know. So I'm like, damn, the food was that bad? I haven't been to the Caribbean before. I'm planning to go 
hopefully that, that in my in my my thirties I've decided that my thirties are going to be the best years of my life because I have so many travel plans right I've 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 never left the 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 U S and I have a lot of plans in my thirties to travel all across the world, um, so. Have anybody been to the Caribbean? And if you have, what was the food like for you? Was it nasty? What y'all know about the food? Is Scotty right? Now, one thing Scotty was right about. Scotty said, if you come on baddies, she said, a word of advice to girls for next season. If you come on baddies, please realize that it's not just about fighting. She said, bring a personality, bring the fashions, bring the shades. And I'm like... Clock it, Scotty. Scotty's right. She's been doing it for four years now. She know, she know what it takes to be a good bat. Even though Scotty's not the most entertaining, I like Scotty being there because she brings balance. She's a normal girl. She's level-headed. She ain't got to be the loudest, craziest bitch in the room. So I've come to the conclusion, and I've just learned to accept it, that Scotty's going to be there, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it, okay? Um, And she's right. Fighting can only sustain for so long. And we're bored. Now, she... Scotty asked Natalie, whose idea was it to cast Slim and Dia? And I have to agree with her, y'all. I'm sorry. I have to agree with her on that one. Um... I mean, look, it's not like Scotty's the best casting choice in the world. But Slim and Dia were poor casting decisions. And this is why, Zeus, I know y'all be watching and peeping. Y'all be watching all the content creators that talk about y'all shows. Y'all be watching our pages. Y'all be lurking. Y'all be sending Bree over here to watch and lurk and spy. Hey, Bree. Hey, Bookie Book. Um, take this back to Lemon Pepper and while you watching, sis. And uh, I'll invoice you if y'all end up using my idea. Hire a professional casting team. Stop allowing Natalie and Lemon Pepper and Daryl Farmer and all those other motherfuckers over there that work at the Zeus Network. Stop allowing them to cast these hoes. They don't have a casting background. Casting is not as easy as just like, tell me your name, why you're a baddie. Okay, no, there's levels to this shit. There's criteria, there's IQ testing, there's, you know, there's all kind of different um, per personality tests, physicals, all sorts of things that go into play when casting for television shows. But of course, Zeus Network wouldn't know that. You would, they, he should. Lemon, no, Lemon Pepper knows that. He just ain't doing it. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why they got all this money. They take the cheap way out on everything. I mean, look at the fucking intro to this season. Somebody did it on fucking iMovie. Somebody downloaded Canva and made the motherfucking intro to the season. No shade to Canva. No shade to iMovie. I use them both. But I'm not Zeus Network. And I don't have a million dollars of budget. Okay? <sighs> Natalie said had the nerve to say we need a part two of Batty's Caribbean and hit more islands. Don't you ever let that roll off your fucking chin again, Natalie. No, the fuck we don't need a part two of any of this shit. We barely want to watch Baddies Midwest or Baddies Gone Wild. We barely want to watch that shit, bitch. Do not ever let a Baddies Caribbean 2 roll off your lips. Now, the ending of this episode just sickened me to my stomach, okay? We're about to close this out. But we're gonna before we close it out, we've got to talk about the ending because I was so disgusted in the way at Natalie was acting. Everybody was acting right because Natalie stands up and she says, "I have one chain in my bag," almost like she was Tyra motherfucking Banks on goddamn America's Next Top Model in front of me. I have three beautiful women, but only one of you will have the chance to make it to be America's Next Top Model. That's, ex that's exactly how. <laughs> that's how Natalie was holding that little bag, a little purse with them, um, with that baddie chain in it. He says, I have one chain in my bag, and there's three girls here Callie, Diamond, and Meatball. But only one of you will get a baddie chain. 
Now, Natalie tells all the girls, if you want Meatball to vote, if you want Meatball to get a vet batty chain, raise your hand. And everybody raises their motherfucking hand. Go figure, right? Go figure. And why did they vote for, why did they vote for Meatball, ladies and gentlemen? I knew y'all were my people. I knew y'all were my people. They voted for Meatball off of sympathy. Off of fucking sympathy, y'all. Because how long have we heard Meatball cry over this motherfucking batty chain? Ever since the batty chain was brought up, she's made a big deal about getting one. And it's just like... It's payola. Okay? It's payola. Let's be real. Let's be real. Meatball did not deserve that baddie chain. Diamond the Body deserved that motherfucking baddie chain. Diamond the Body carried this motherfucking season on her back while the rest of you hoes faded into the background and was scared to do anything, was scared to clock in, was scared to do whatever you got to motherfucking do. Diamond deserved that motherfucking baddie chain. Second, Callie would have deserved it after her. Meatball does not deserve a baddie chain because she's not a baddie. Okay, let's call it like let's call it like it fucking is. Now, Diamond the Body is like me. In her confessional, she said, "There's this imaginary significance to this body chain because I don't get what the big deal is." That's what Diamond said, and I'm a hundred percent with her on that. I told y'all that chain probably turned your motherfucking neck green. I don't get it. I don't get it. No, you know what? I do get it for Meatball because I told y'all. Y'all know why Meatball want that body chain. When she gets home, she gonna pawn that bitch. She didn't care about that goddamn chain. She wanna pawn it. Cause if it is real, she knows she gonna hit a lick with it. If those chains are real, diamonds and shit, she can go pawn it and hit a lick. Diamond says that Meatball has been begging and crying for the chain. She tells everybody that. She's like, she's been begging and crying for it. Go ahead and give it to her. She Diamond clocked it. And she says, Meatball. And this is not in confessionals, y'all. This is not in confessionals. Diamond is telling this to the entire group. She says, Meatball was being a jealous ass bitch all season. She said the chain was cheap. She said the chain was fake. Blah, 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 blah. And she did. Meatball said all this shit. Now for you to be so proud. And I got my chain. I got my chain. I got my chain. And then... By the way, we see um by the way we see Tinkabella put the chain on on uh Meatball. She 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 they said and action and Tinkabella said, I'm gonna put the chain on my sister. Uh uh-uh. uh give me that chain, I'm gonna put it on my sister. I'm gonna put it on my sister. Come here, come here, sister. And cut and scene. You was just dogging the bitch and said that you forgive her, but you, or you said, uh, you forgive her, but you don't accept her apology. Now you're running over here and giving her a chain. I'm so proud of you. Si- oh, no, this is what, this is what Diamond is talking about. This is what Diamond is talking about. It's also fucking fake and phony. Now, Natalie stands up and makes this big ass fake, speaking of acting, big ass fake speech. And she gets up and she pulls out another chain out of her bag. She pulls another purse out of her, or, but another chain out of her purse. And she says, I had another chain the whole time. And they're all like, oh, oh. And Meatball's like, she was testing your temperature. Meatball tells Diamond the Body, see, she was testing your temperature. She was testing your temperature. No, the fuck she wasn't. No, she wasn't. She was not testing anybody's fucking temperature. That was just how it played out. That was just how the fuck it played out. Natalie says she had another chain the whole time. And she says no one is going to get this chain. Nobody. Because what you did, Diamond, what you did was disgusting. That's exactly how she said it, y'all. That's exactly how she said it. Except she stood up. And she was like, I have one more chain. But nobody's getting it. Because what you just did was disgusting. And same. We got another actress in the motherfucking group. Okay, if you that if you that salty about what she just did, get the chain to Callie. What Callie do? And 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 you know what, Natalie? You know what? You know what, Natalie? You know what's disgusting? 
aligning yourself with an alleged pred a uh, tour. I don't want to say the word out loud altogether, but that that's what's disgusting. What dis, what's disgusting is aligning yourself with a network who allegedly exploits pimps, abuse people. That's disgusting. No, you know what? No, it's disgusting, Natalie. The way you treat some of these girls and act like you're their madam and their pimp. Do we really want to get into disgusting and the Zeus network? Do we really want to get into disgusting and the Zeus network? Didn't Jayla say y'all put her out on the side of the road after calling her all kind of bitches and hoes and tricks and shit? Jayla said it at her own mouth, right? Sounds pretty disgusting to me. What about when Lemon Pepper called you everything but your name and treated you like a whore? And told you you're going to get your ass out there on that stuff. Was that not disgusting? I'm just confused. Y'all pick and choose when you're morally. And what's disgusting is that none of these girls really like your ass. And they're all only here for a check. And, and to be on TV. While they all act like they love you and following behind you. And Roly, I'm disappointed in you, Roly. Because this is what I'm talking about. Season 2, Roly would have called Natalie out on the bullshit. But Natalie gets up after she calls Diamond the Body Disgusting. And she says, and you know what? I'm taking a helicopter back. Because I'm not riding with you. And she gets up and walks away. And Roly immediately gets up and follows right behind her like a little lost puppy dog. Like, what? Roly, you sold out. You sold out to Natalie. And it's not because it's not because Roly just loves Natalie and they have this amazing friendship. It's because Roly knows that she has to be on Natalie's good side. Because trust and believe, she's got to be on Natalie's good side to stay on this show. Because trust and believe, if her and Natalie really fell out and this show ended tomorrow, her and Natalie Nunn are not going to hang out and speak. Oh, unless unless both of them have something they can offer one another. I get it, Roly. I get it. You love the lifestyle. It's everything that any of us could have ever dreamed of, right? You know, the private jets, the money, the traveling. I get it. I get it. I really, really do. I don't blame that. But I feel like the real Roly is missing sometimes. And I think this is what the fans were talking about last season when they petitioned for her to be gone. I think she's got a little big headed at times. Not even big headed. I feel like she's just lost her way. Anyway. Let me know what you guys think about the season finale of Baddies Caribbean. We made it to the end. Um, I have um, for the for, for Baddies. I can't speak. I can't talk today. The reunion. Okay. For the reunion, I have some special guests that may be joining me live right here on the Damien After Dark stage. Uh, to help me recap the show. So, um, not any baddies. Maybe. No, not any baddies. Maybe I shouldn't have told y'all that. I don't know. Just stay tuned, okay? I got some stuff that I'm planning to do for the reunion. If Hopefully it goes through. Um, I want to try to do something different with recapping it. So, love you guys for watching. Please make sure, if you haven't subscribed, you click that subscribe button. Click that thumbs up button. It's right down down there um join the conversation leave me all your thoughts and opinions on the season finale what did you think of the season finale and is there anybody that you want to see return for baddies midwest okay or baddies gone wild let me know and if you would like to support the damien after dark movement and help me sustain and grow this channel please please donate by getting in the description box below there'll be some ways that you can donate there um, and be mindful that leaving a super chat, YouTube takes 50% of the revenue. 
that you tip and donate to us creators okay love you guys so much and i appreciate you for being here don't forget follow your dreams love yourself and don't let no bitch test you all right see ya